Hey guys. Okay, whoa, it looks like I have no shirt on. <laughs> so I'm gonna stand a little bit further away because I do. I actually have my um, bikini on. I am going outside. I'm done at the store right now, so I'm gonna go um, get a little sun, does good for the soul, and do some work outside. So if you haven't ever taken your work outside or your workout outside, I highly recommend it. Um, getting that sun is good for you guys. I don't recommend sitting in the sun all day, but I usually sit out for an hour or read a book and it just, it does good for your soul. Um, so here we go. Five minutes before I go outside. I want to crush two common fears that I have that most of my challengers have, that most of my coach has, and let's just be honest, everybody has. Number one, what if I fail? What if I start this and I fail? Like, uh, what if I don't know, you know what I'm doing and I just I'm not good at it. What if I'm not good at it? Who freaking cares? I don't know where I mean, I'm guilty too. I don't know where we came up with this mentality that we have to be good at every single freaking thing we do the first time we do it. Like how do we possibly expect that of ourselves, right? Um, sorry, I was reading a comment. How do we expect that of ourselves? It makes no sense whatsoever. And I don't know when this started or how this started that whatever you do, you should be an expert at right away. It's like, do you throw your kid into grade 12 right off the start and expect them to know everything? Do you throw, do you start a new sport and expect to be an NBA all-star after your first practice? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me um, why we expect that of ourselves. So anything you do, you guys, you need to give yourself some grace and some learning time. I'm talking years. Like, how long does it take somebody to be an expert at something? a lifetime, years, and you're never going to be an expert at it. So saying, what if I fail? Well, what's your measurement of failure? Okay, um, less than 50% in a grade um, in school is a failing, but you don't really have that in your job, in a fitness program, and in life. So you need to decide what's your definition of failure? Because if you're scared of I'm gonna fail, but you don't know what measure that is, um, like what's failing to you? What, you don't finish a fitness program? That's not failing to me. Friggin' restart it, who cares? You failed your nutrition plan, well what does that mean? You slipped up one day, who gives a shit? Start again the next day. To me, that's not failing, so you need to define what it is for you, coaching even. What was failing to me, the only way a coach can fail is if they cancel their coaching membership and quit. I was succeeding the first day I became a coach because coaching made me go buy my first personal development book and that's what got me into personal development. That level of success is all I need. If I did nothing else with coaching, I can say I was successful because that was my measure. So. I need you to stop thinking about the worst case scenario. I need you to start thinking about the best case scenario and really defining what failure is for you because I think it'll lift a big um, weight off your chest. I think failure gets mixed up with not having patience. Um, you can figure out pretty much anything in this world. Let's be honest, we have the power of the internet. If you do some research, you can figure out pretty much anything. Um, you just have, the pa have to have the patience to do the research, to put in the work, and do it consistently, and see it out long enough that you see success. Success does not happen instantly, and I think if you expect it to, that's where your definition of failure comes. You're not willing to tough it out long enough to see success so you think you failed when that's not the case. Okay, I'm going to totally over five minutes. Next. Fear. What will people think of me? What will people think of me if I start a new workout program and I, what if, what will people think of me if I start this nutrition plan and I won't go out to eat with them or what will the waiter think of me if I ask for like a chicken and a salad? Um, what will my friends think of me if I'm not having a beer when we go out with them? Um, what will my friends think of me if I start reading personal development books? What will they think of me when I became a coach instead of a teacher, which I went to school for five years for? Um, first of all, I'm gonna tell you, you need to get over this or it's gonna eat you freaking alive. And I'm a full, 
full on guilty of this um, for five years of university and the whole year afterwards. Um, I like to be a people pleaser. I like to go with the flow. I like to go with the flow of society and just fit in. And when I finished my last year of university and started teaching, I said, why am I not happy? I, I graduated with honors. I was like the top of my class. I'm, I'm a good teacher. Why the hell am I not happy? Why don't I feel filled? Because I was not listening to myself. I was just listening about everybody around me and not listening to myself at all. Nobody else determines my happiness. Nobody else pays my bills but me. I have a few people in my life that I truly honor their opinion and I will ask for their opinion and everybody else doesn't matter. Unless they're on the same wavelength and same path to bettering themselves as me, then I will definitely, um, I definitely want to work with them. But if they're the people that, um, it's so sad, I get this a lot with my challengers, start a workout program. People have told me this before, Morgan, you're skinny. Why do you, why do you work out? Why do I work out? I don't know. I'm pretty in shape. Why do I work out? Not to look good, you guys. Like, people don't get it. I work out because it makes me feel amazing. It makes me feel wonderful. Why do I eat good and why do I order grilled chicken and a salad and a glass of red wine instead of a burger and fries usually when I go out to eat? Because I want to feel good. Because I like to feel good. It makes me happier. It makes me a better person to be around. Why did I become a coach versus a teacher um, when everybody told me I'd be done coaching in pff, a couple months? Good luck with that, Morgan. Because it made me happy. I loved it. I woke up with butterflies in my stomach. Um, oh, sorry. I was just reading another comment. I don't give a shit what other people think. And if you don't like that, you're probably going to unfollow me. But I promise you, when you get over that and you own and you rock what you want to do, you're going to feel unstoppable. That's where the confidence comes from. That's where the strength comes from. That's when you become your best self because you're letting it out and you'll be happier. You'll be more fun to be around. Um, you're going to figure out who am I? And it's so fun figuring out who's Morgan? What does she like to do? What does she enjoy doing? Um, she likes going outside, working in the sun, listening to rap and working on her beach body business. Where I wasn't happy, stuck in a classroom all day long, rushed to get home, not see my family much. So I went against what everybody told me and I went off out and did what I wanted. When people told me I shouldn't work out and eat healthy, I'm fine. I still work out every single morning and I still fuel my body with good stuff because it makes me feel good. So number one, what if I fail? You need to crush that fear because what's your definition of failure? Unless you die, um, what's the worst case scenario here, right? Um, so you need to get over that and what will people think of me? That's just a given, you guys. Pick the few people that their opinion matters and shut out everything else. Talk to those people, get their opinion on things, all that jazz, but the rest, you matter. This is you, this is your body, this is your life, this is your happiness. Nobody else controls that but you. Um, and that's just it. And you get rid of those two things, they're all mental, you guys. They're totally mental. And get rid of them. You create your atmosphere. And I think once people start to take control of that, they're gonna be so much happier. I control who I surround myself with, right? I control the media I listen to. I control my social media. Yes, I just said it. You control your social media. Delete who you wanna delete. Follow who you want to follow. End of story. You control your social media. Make it what you want to make it. De you determine what TV shows you watch, what books you read, what friends you're around. Um, it's going to be hard because you're probably going to break your norm. You might have to cut some ties with people. That's okay. If nobody told you it's okay to change, I'm telling you right now, it's okay to change. All right? So that was double the time I said it was going to be. I'm going to go outside. I hope that helped you guys. Feel free to share this with anybody you think that could deserve this message. Love ya.